Warning, due to adult language and humor, the following content may not be suitable for any viewers under the age of 18. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. The views and opinions expressed during the following live stream or video content are those of the individual and may not reflect those of others. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are, and welcome one and all to Pacific Forum for Pop Talk. This will be my review for the second episode of The Last of Us, which was called Infected. This episode review will have some mild spoilers. I will try not to spoil the whole episode for those of you who have yet to see this episode. To summarize what happened in this episode is there's this doctor in Indonesia who's recruited by the government to examine this body of a woman. This body has various infections on her and one particular infection that we were all introduced to in the first episode and that of course is the fungus infection we find out that this woman was infected and that the person who infected her is still around of course this is all taken back in 2003 long story short for this part of the episode is she tells the official after he asks if there's medicine or vaccine, that there's no such thing. Flash forward 20 years later to present day, Joel, Ellie, and Tessa are walking through the city of Boston. They're trying to find a way through so they can meet up with their contact, get their equipment that they need, and deliver Ellie to the people who are waiting for her. They go through the city. They encounter several ruins they encounter flooded hotels and they also see that there are plenty of zombies i'm calling them zombies i know they're not zombies but funky zombies as i called them in the first episode review but there's plenty of them around and we learn a little bit more information that they're connected by sort of a hive mind and if you attack one you alert the rest of the hive and they know exactly where you're at. And as they're walking through the city of Boston, they come across this museum and they figure we're going to go through this muse museum and get to our contacts that way. Well, as they're going through this museum, they do encounter a dead body and they go to the upper levels of the museum because in order to get where they need to go they have to go toward the roof and as they're going through they encounter two funky zombies and again i'm going to be calling them out that from here on out so they encounter the two fungi zombies there's a tussle and of course ellie and joel and tess have to try to escape there's of course gunshots and eventually the two fungi zombies are dead we get to the roof and we find out that tessa's ankles is sprained so joel helps her mend her sprained ankle with some electrical tape and they end up going into another building after climbing off of the roof via a ladder when they get there it is revealed that Tess, unfortunately, is infected due to the scuffle that occurred in the museum. This is the last episode that we're going to see Tessa in because, well, there's a big explosion at the end and Tessa dies. Now, why is there a big explosion at the end? Because they managed to make it to one of their contact points and they see a truck there's a dead body underneath the truck 
and they see a trail of blood going into this building. Once they get into this building, they see that everybody's dead, and they also notice that there's a lot of equipment. There's grenades, there's, of course, plenty of fuel, and of course, with that fuel, Joel ends up realizing they have to leave because the bodies that they see on the floor that they think are dead, both from the former living and the former dead, well, the dead aren't dead, if that makes any sense. Basically, you see the fungi crawling out of the bodies, and one by one, the hive starts getting up, and they start chasing after Joel and Ellie. Tess says, you gotta go, you gotta go. Leave me behind. Of course, Ellie doesn't want to leave Tessa behind, but unfortunately, Tessa being infected, she sacrifices herself, and that's where you get the explosion because of the grenades and the fuel, all because the catalyst for all that is a lighter that Tessa has, and she is able to ignite it, causing the explosion once the flame hits the fuel that's already leaking on the floor. Overall, I didn't think this was too bad of an episode. It was still, you know, in the mid-range as far as I was concerned. I would still give this a 6.5. I'm still not impressed with the actress that's playing Ellie. You know, maybe that's because I've also been told Ellie in the games is a better character, but it still remains to be seen. Maybe as the show goes on, I'll actually start liking this version of Ellie. Now, considering I haven't played the games, I don't know whether that's going to be the case or not. I would definitely say watch it now. Maybe I was expecting a little bit more. What that little bit more was is, you know, just a little bit more conversation, a little bit, a little bit more backstory. You know, that professor in Indonesia, I would have liked to have seen what else they had come up with after she had talked to the government official. Of course, one of the things that they do mention twice in this episode, first with that professor back in 2003, and then as Joel, Ellie, and Tess are walking through the streets of Boston, is that in order to slow down the infection, they ended up going through various cities and bombing those cities. Overall, I would have liked to have you know, heard a little bit more, you know, were there some scientists and various people in the medical field, the FDA, whatever, trying to at least come up with a vaccine or some sort of cure to try to slow down this virus, even though we've already been told as an audience member twice now that there is no vaccine, there is no, no medicine available, there is no cure. I guess I would have liked to have heard that there were still some people with the odds against them still trying to come up with some way to stop this virus. But we'll, we'll see what happens in episode three. This show, it, it's it's watchable, but it's not something I can say that I'm going to go to everybody and say, you got to watch it, you got to watch it, you got to watch it. Just like I said during last week's review with Cash Money 007 and Baron Orin Tech, I'm not going to get up on the hill or get up on the mountaintop and Praise this series to high heaven. I'm just not. It's okay. With that being said, I am going to watch episode three. And after episode three, I will decide whether or not I'm going to continue with this series. Those are my thoughts on this episode with a little bit of spoilers here and there. You know, I figured here it is Thursday when I'm recording this. I think people have had plenty of time to watch this episode if they wanted to watch it. That's a wrap for this review. If you like what you saw, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like what you saw and heard, leave a thumbs down. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. And consider subscribing to the Pacific Forum for YouTube channel. I not only do reviews of television series and movies with Pop Talk, but I also play games. When the baseball season arrives, I will also be recapping as many Chicago Cub games as I am capable of. Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and I will see you all later.